time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor and analyst, and Mr. Hardy Burt, author and correspondent. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Dr. Norman Thomas, prominent socialist leader. Mr. Thomas, it's a great pleasure to have you with us again on the Chronoscope. I'm sure that our viewers want to hear some of this uh, robust socialist criticism of yours uh, directed at the new Eisenhower administration. First of all, sir, uh, what do you think of these new positive policies uh, in the Orient? Not much. I doubt how positive they are. Uh, I would be glad for anything that would work in the Orient to end the stalemate. I would be glad for anything in the Orient that would get not only our boys, but the uh, French boys uh, well, out of the trenches and uh, Specifically, sir, what do you think about uh, our latest action toward Formosa? Do you think that Chiang Kai-shek will be able to help us out in Korea now? Very little. There was a, uh, there was a uh, cartoon, I think, of hair blocks in the Washington Post that expressed my general idea. Some functionary stood behind uh, Chiang, uh, having just taken off a great military coat. Very, very impressive. And here was a poor, skinny Chong shivering <coughs> on the beach as the waves of the sea rolled in. But what do you think of it, of it as a tactic, after all? It's supposed I, I, to... I, I, think it is a, I think it is a very dubious tactic, and for this reason. Eisenhower's great and very well-deserved reputation in Europe was made by his extraordinary success in pulling together men of different nations and different points of view. And therefore, I expected from him... Uh, at least a greater effort than we have had to pull together our allies and friends. The one uh, the fact you can't escape is that we have simply got to stay with uh, the non-communists of Asia and of Europe. Not just the British, not just the French, not just the Indians, the whole lot of them. Now it's difficult. I don't think they're always reasonable or always right. But strong as we are, we aren't strong enough to ignore them. Well, now, what I think just, is just, just, just let me finish yeah. this, uh, then ask me the next. I think that it was a great pity that Eisenhower didn't make a greater effort and uh, perhaps a more successful effort to carry along at least the ascent of these peoples before he suddenly announced it. Uh, the whole reaction in the world has been dubious, to put it uh, mildly. Well, now, and I do not think that any gain that Chong can make is worth that Backset. Well, now, is that your criticism of it, sir, because it wasn't well received by Britain and France and other people? My criticism is that, is that uh, a measure of such doubtful military advantage ought not to have been proposed without much more careful consultation to try to overcome and weaken, if possible, the others. I will add that I think the military advantage very doubtful indeed. I shall be surprised, I shall be pleased, let me honestly say, but I shall be vastly surprised if within any near period of time Chang accomplishes much on the mainland by hit and run. And I am afraid that our allies may be right. I don't think anyone wants World War now or an extension of, a, of the Asian War for more of our boys. But our prestige, our pride, a whole lot of things might be involved if uh, Chang comes a rather bad cropper. Well, now, now it's, very, they fight very, back. it's very clear, sir, that you are... Uh, opposed to the use of Shang Sky checks troops in the mainland or anywhere else for that matter. Now, uh, in Korea too, I imagine. Yes, I suppose them in Korea uh, uh, also, partly because unless they change their minds, the Koreans haven't welcomed the idea of Chang's troops. Are you opposed also to a blockade of the China coast by uh, American forces? Are I'm opposed forces? to the blockade unless you can carry along uh, UN assent to it. Are you opposed to the bombing of Manchurian bases? I am opposed to the bombing of Manchurian bases unless you can present evidence that may be presented that the military advantage will be uh, very decided and the risk is small. On the Manchurian bases, let me say this, you will know not all, not all military opinion is for the bombing of those bases. Well, what do, you think it would be, do you think it would be helpful to recognize uh, Red China as the British have done in no. the cause of peace? Uh, I would never recognize a nation or a government in arms against the UN. 
I think that uh, the principle that you don't shoot your way into the U.N. ought to be uh, uh, fully established. Mr. Thomas, would you agree with General Eisenhower that we are not likely to get a truce unless we are able to hurt the Chinese enemy more? I'm not so sure uh, about how, even that. How do you think we can get a truce, then, if we don't tighten the screws on them some way? Uh, I think that uh, perhaps the screws are tighter now than we altogether realize. I think there's a good deal of evidence that the North Koreans are very unhappy on this. I think that if we could do what we have not done, if Eisenhower could do it, perhaps uh, after careful preparation by a great appeal to the UN, if he could show that, that we were really a united uh, world against this outrage, I think Chong might, I mean, Stalin might find reason to change his mind. It is your belief, sir, that Russia and Stalin are behind the Chinese Why, of course. in this Korean oh, Of course. Is it your belief also that the ultimate aim of Russia is world conquest? Of course. Do you think that uh, Korea... Now, wait a minute. Uh, let me interrupt you. Right. I do not uh, uh, like to say myself, and I do not like you to say, the ultimate aim of Russia. <laughs> Poor Russians, they haven't got such an aim. The ultimate aim of world communism, to which or on which Stalin has imposed a Russian imperial pattern, is the absolute conquest of mankind, body, mind, and, and, and spirit. And that's all of mankind. And that's all of mankind. That doesn't necessarily mean that Stalin wants a world war. You think he would start one to achieve his end? If he thought it would work without too much cost. Well, but he is fairly you, pr prudent. Do you think Korea could be a starting place for this world it war? It could, though I do not think he now wants it. But I remind you, you can blunder into wars when you don't altogether want them. Uh, the thing that I wanted to go, to go back to is this. We now know that Stalin's uh, uh, policy, for the time being, is a policy of dividing the non-communist world. It's a policy of making them all hate us. And that's one reason why I think it's so vitally important for us to uh, cultivate uh, even our unreasonable allies and potential friends. But I think that if Stalin could be shown that his obduracy, that his... Uh, contemptuous rejection of that Indian formula on the truth was really uniting the world, he might uh, find reason Mr. To, Mr. Thomas, to change his policy. Would you tell our viewers, uh, would you say to our viewers that uh, you don't think we should take any action as a nation that is not enthusiastically supported by the British and the French? No, I wouldn't. Uh, that, that's stating a general rule much more definitely than I would. I'd want to know the action. I would simply say that any action which alienates not only the British and the French, but the great mass of Asians, ought not to be taken without an overwhelming evidence of its military advisability, such as not even Eisenhower or any of his cabinet have tried to give us. Well, Mr. Thomas, obviously now you are opposed lock, stock, and barrel to uh, the Eisenhower uh, program in uh, Korea. Uh, no, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, that is so far as Formosa is concerned, so far as uh, the possibility of a blockade is concerned, <coughs> so far as bombing, bombing Manchurian bases are concerned. But that now is you must stock and barrel. You must, have a, you must have a positive policy for ending this conflict. In no, I, ha uh, uh, I have uh, a very positive policy, and neither is Eisenhower. <laughs> it's all very experimental. We live in a world so bad, partly because of our own past mistakes, that there are lots of things that we passionately want to do that we can't do quickly at a cost we can afford to pay. I think that we have a better chance of reaching within a foreseeable time uh, on end even of this Korean stalemate if we uh, keep close to our allies, if we hold our, our present position and push it if we can. Do you think our if allies train, should be... Should you think our if allies we train rocks, more rocks, I think we've got a better chance than by darting off without properly consulting our allies on uh, this Formosa business. Well, on, on, the rest, on the rest of the administration, sir, how do you feel about the administration in general, the new administration? It's Are you enthusiastic? Early, it's, uh, it's too early to tell. I am rather enjoying it. Uh, well, I, I like to, I think that uh, a new broom may sweep clean, and uh, there was some sweeping that needed to be done. I think it's going to be very educational. I, I think that I'd like to see a uh, big business openly responsible for government <laughs> for a while. It would be quite edifying to see what happens to business and to government and to the people. Our, our I shall be very, very, I shall watch rather dubiously. Now that Mr. Huey has brought up this question of new administrations, uh, would you make a prediction as to when you think a socialist candidate will occupy the White House? 
Uh, if he calls himself socialist, probably not for quite a while. But if the about the socialist candidate in the sense of uh, believing that you can only get a decent society by uh, exalting cooperation of men and nations, and that it will require planning and planning in, uh, involving the state, which must be kept democratic, if that's what you mean, might be pretty you, soon. You the Democrats have come along, and look how far the Republicans have come since I first knew them. You mean a, so a socialist might go in un in the, under the guise I'd say he of wasn't a socialist, that's yes, right. Yes, be a Republican or a Democrat. And I'd say, well, God bless your names, don't matter too much. A rose under any name would smell as sweet. On your, on your last uh, appearance here, sir, I remember you startled some of us by stating that you didn't think taxes were high enough. <laughs> Now, what's your attitude toward taxes uh, now? Do you want to see them come down? Or do you uh, think taxes are never high enough when there is an unbalanced budget, except in the uh, very beginning of an emergency. Well, what uh, the first business is to balance the budget. After that, I'd like to see taxes reduced. Incidentally, if I were Stalin, I wouldn't be too scared about what's going to happen in Korea when I see the passion to reduce taxes. Well, it, as a final question, sir, do you believe as an individual and as a veteran observer that there is a chance to have a peaceful world in the, in the foreseeable future? I think there is a chance in the foreseeable future, it's simply on a plane of, of self-interest, to get a world in which conflict is transferred from the realm of atomic war, simply in order that we should live. Tra the conflict would be transferred. The only way you could do it would be agreed disarmament under a strengthened UN, disarmament down to a police level. And in terms of 20, 30 years, it's the world's only hope. I and do not believe that we can afford atomic and hydrogen war, uh, even to get rid of the communist uh, uh, menace. And as uh, on the other hand, we can't afford peace by uh, uh, appeasement. And my hope would be that firm resistance could sometime bring even a communist to recognize that you've got to transfer time. And, and as a That's the only hope there is. As a lifetime student of communism, you see the communist world perhaps joining with us in building a peaceful world sometime in the future. In bringing a world in which, you, in which conflict is taken out of the realm of atomic war, if you mean by that peaceful, yes. Well, there are well, lots of I'm conflicts I'm that sorry, we carry Mr. on Thomas, about war. I'm afraid our time is up, and thank you very much for being with us, sir. The opinions that you've heard our speakers <coughs> express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Hardy Burt. Our distinguished guest was Dr. Norman Thomas, prominent socialist leader. The traditional presentation gift to symbolize achievement, honor, or respect is a fine watch. And throughout the world, the fine watch of highest preference for presentation purposes is Longines, the world's most honored watch. For no other watch is so much a symbol of achievement, for no other watch is achieved so much. Ten World Fair Grand Prizes and 28 Gold Medal Awards, for instance. And we might add countless prizes and awards from government observatories. Yes, the traditional presentation gift to symbolize achievement, honor, or respect is a fine watch. And throughout the world, the fine watch of highest preference is Longines, the world's most honored watch. Now, Longines watches are unmatched for impressive beauty of appearance and superiority of construction. And you should remember that you can buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. Longines, the world's most honored watch. The world's most honored gift. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, agency for Longines Whitnor watches. Crime Syndicated is exposed on the CBS Television Network. This is the CBS Television Network.